What was good? Because I loved day one. I absolutely loved it. Yeah, great. Seeing the employee mindset, big deal. Really, really, really big deal. It's huge, huge to understand that when most of us have been brought up in employee households, loving households, great households, but employee households all the same, right? And so it's important for us to realize some of the behaviors and, and coding that we've been had. Let me have a look at some of these other uh, things that the people that are on live here. Giving is the right way. Yes, you can't let that go. All entrepreneurs give. Zuckerberg gave to the world Facebook, you see? And then we all get this amazing tool here to invest. We had to give. Every single entrepreneur making money is by giving. Knowledge is power. I like it, Kylie. That we're programmed. Like it, Gucci. Awesome. Nice, Christine. If you can't do it, hire someone. Love it, Karen. I'm glad you're here, Kylie. Yeah, yesterday was big. Yesterday was big. Is that the, the big thing to really get that I want you all to land on from yesterday is that a million is easy. A million is easy. The problem is, is if you don't have the right thinking, it can look huge, it can look hard. And so a lot of us who have been brought up in working class, we have to become self-made. And the great thing is, is 64% of billionaires are self-made. Thanks, Brad wrote in system leverage. So I've got some of the notes up here from yesterday. And so before we begin, I thought we might just uh, have a look at some of the things that, uh, that we covered because I, I thought it was a, I thought it was a really great first day, and I'm excited to see so many of you here and ready to go for the rest of the week. Because you ain't seen nothing yet. You ain't seen nothing yet. We're just getting started. Hey, Doug, good to see you. So the first thing is we really start to break down. I guess what a million is. Well, before that, before that, we talked about what an employee has to understand that an employee is about trading time for money. And most of us are born into that soup, that society. So we don't see anything else. So we had a good look at that and we realized that it causes a lot of limits. Now, the, the thing that we also looked at was that a million is only $500 times 2000, which is about $45 a month times 2000 clients, which is not that much, right? It's not that much. And we are, we're talking about this big number, a million. It's not, it's a thousand people. You know, 2,000 people paying you $45 a month. It's actually less than that, it's about 43. <laughs> it's not very much. And that's a big thing to understand because once we start to break it down mathematically, our brain starts going, well, it's easy. But anyway, I'm still recapping yesterday. So. So it's, uh, it was good. And the problem is, is if, if we're born as an employee, we don't understand that we shouldn't just be putting our time into something and having it disappear. We've got to put our time into systems and books. And I talked about Elvis and not because I necessarily like Elvis more than anyone else. The reason why I talk about him is he's got no time. But what he did is instead of being that talented uh, musician, he was able to put it into a system that we were able to consume well beyond his years. Let me ask you a question. Who would like to create a system that they'd give their life to, that they create something that then when they're gone, it's still making impact. It's feeding their grandchildren. Wouldn't that be nice? I mean, that's, that's what Elvis did. I mean, just using him as an example. Isn't that a great idea to create something that's not just feeding you, but it's feeding people for generations to come? I mean, that's a, that's a great idea. I love that. Disneyland, you know? Walt Disney did that, Walt and Roy, if you look at the real story. They created a system. You know, McDonald's isn't the best hamburgers. It's not the best hamburgers, but it has the best system. It was created. It, it, helped, it, it gives. And people say, oh, McDonald's is big, bad, and evil. No, it's not. People want uh, fast food that's done, that's predictable. That's why it exists. It's not this big thing out there. It exists because there's desire. And that's a, that's a thing to realize. So we talked about some of the things. You need a hungry audience who wants to buy. You need a product or service that's delivered without your time. And you need a marketing and sales system. And then we started to look at some things like, you know, I, I don't have a product or service. And I talked to you about Oprah. You know, I said, you said, 
I don't have uh, the talent. And I said, well, neither did, neither did Brantz and Steve Jobs. None of them had the talent of, of doing something. They understood a different structure. They said, don't have the money. I remind you of JK Rowling. You say, don't have an idea. And I say, fantastic. Imitate, innovate, don't invent. Look at what's working. Do you remember it? Be a fast follower. Get that in your brain. Be a fast follower. Facebook was fast to follow MySpace. Google was a fast follower uh, of Yahoo. They weren't the first. Be a fast follower. See what's already working and go there. And then I took you through the different levels of how someone uh, operates and can create. Seeker, you come up with an idea. You figure out how to sell it. How do you reach people? How do you systemize it? And then how do you actually find the right people? And this brings us to a beautiful blank page. And it brings us to day two. It brings us here. And I'm excited. I'm excited about today. Today, to me, is the most important day. Today is about understanding the structures and what stopped you and what is stopping you. Now, I have a little, uh, a little thing that I want to show you. I feel like I keep darting off screen and I'm sorry about that, but I'm not going too far. Today, I want to talk to you about some of the, the laws of nature. Today, I want to talk to you about self-sabotage and, and to understand that. Today is going to be the day that you finally understand why you haven't moved through to what you want. Here's what's interesting. It's definitely not hard work that gets millions. It's not. A lot of us think it's going to be hard work. But the truth is, how many of you type in a yes, you know somebody who's worked really hard their whole life and hasn't manifested the millions? Can't be hard work. It can't be having a good idea. How many of you know that uh, there are people that have great ideas and haven't made the millions? It's not about talent. I've seen tons of talented people not make millions. It's not about starting with a silver spoon in your mouth. How many of you have heard of uh, successful people born with a silver spoon in their mouth that turn out to become drug addicts or other things? It's not that. So it's not, it's not where you're born either. The amount of, uh, you know, the Google inventors, one of them, if, if not both of them, come from outside the United States. The amount of immigrants that turn out to be multimillionaires and billionaires is a huge proportion. So it's not even really where you're born. So, so what the heck is it? And that's what we want to discover and understand today. Because once you understand this, once you understand what it is, well, then you can make sure that you either change it, align with it, or make it happen. So today's a big day. And uh, I want to start off by really asking you, how big do you think your money problem is? How big is the problem? And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to you know, help you by guiding you through a few questions. Here's the first question I have for you. And just type in a yes if this is you. You've had the same income for years. It doesn't change. You can't get to a higher bracket of income. You just stay the same. You feel stuck. Nothing changes. You go to courses. You do all sorts of things. Other people are successful, but not you. Some of you, that's you. Others, it's not. Just type in a yes if it is or a no if it's not. Here's the next one. Is this true for you? You've made more money, but somehow you're always back to where you started. Each time you get more money, you attract a circumstance that sabotages you. Somehow you end up with more expenses and you end up back to where you started. Or worse, is that you? Or is this you? As soon as you get more money, you can't keep it. You feel the need to spend it. As soon as you get more, you increase what you spend on and it goes. 
Is that you? Hmm. Or, or what about this? Let me ask you a question. If someone handed you a million dollars in a box for no reason other than that, that you're alive and on their path, you didn't work for it, nothing. How would you feel being given that money? Type in how you would feel. How would you feel? Some people say not deserving, some say guilty, wary, grateful, excited, but not deserving, blessed, concerned, uncomfortable. Like I want to give it away. I want to help everyone else. Uncomfortable. See, that person is the universe. That person is the world. It wants to give you money. And the way that you feel about it shows a lot about what you need to work on. And I'm going to just dive into it. You guys know me. I get straight into it. We're not mucking around here. This is how most people set up their lives. We have where we are now. And then we have where we want to be. So this is where we desire to be. And then where we are now, we have a few things, okay? Where we are now, we have an identity. We have some results in life. And we have a feeling. Now, specifically, we might have a feeling about money. So we say money is this. The amount of money I have is this. And then we set this up that over here, that when I have, and this is, will have more money. And we think that everything's going to change. Results will be different. The feeling I have in life will be different. Now, let me ask you, how many of you have this set up? Let me ask you, how many of you think your life will be better with more money? Type in a yes if you think your life is going to be better with more money. Just, just be honest right now. Do you think life would be better if you had a whole lot more money? Yeah. Do you think life would be better if you had more money? The structure that you're creating is one that all of us create. What you do is you create an identity that now is not good enough. Basically, what you have now is not good enough. That becomes an identity. And so then you set up an idea that when you have a million, you will be different. Now, this structure, who's got this structure, by the way? You've got this structure in your mind. Making the money, life will be different. If I make the money, life will be different. Now, here's why this will never, ever, ever happen. This will never, ever, ever manifest. If that making the money, life will be different. This is the number one thing we're going to resolve today. Here's why. If you spend your life creating an identity over here that says that what I have now is not good enough. What I have now is not enough and I want something else. There'll be no way that you will ever transition into an identity over here where it is enough. On this side, it's not enough. And over here, it's enough. Because in order for you to make that jump, what has to happen? You have to become someone new. Now, a lot of you want to try to slime out. There's no, Chris, it's all right right now. It's all right. But the truth is, is if right now I said to you, someone's stolen all of your money while you're on this call with me right now, someone's taken all of your money. Tell me, how do you feel when I say that? Look, I, I got something. I'm so sorry to tell you someone's stolen your money while you're on here right now. You have nothing. How do you feel? How do you feel? Awesome. Sick in my stomach. Scared. Worried. Empty. 
See that? What I'm getting you to understand is that you have a structure that is created that says, with money, I feel this. Without it, I don't. There is an external structure in your life called money that is determining how you feel. Now, isn't that interesting? Tell me, how many of you are starting to see the challenge here? Imagine over here is making billions, changing the world. Over here is scarce and stuck. Over here is, is doing what you love. Over here is sacrifice. You spend your whole life just sacrificing. You will never be able to just change your identity like, like that. Oh, now I'm someone who's just in abundance. Because here's why. And I want you to really get this. I want you to really understand this. Because once you see this, we can change it for you. You have two mechanisms happening inside of your brain. One mechanism says, I've got to keep everything the same. I've got to keep everything the same. Now, this mechanism looks after your heart, looks after your breathing. This looks after everything you don't have to think about. This is automatic. This part of you takes over now when you're driving, you don't have to think about it. It just wants things to be the same. It digests your food, it takes care of you. Then you have this other part of you and it wants things to be different. This part wants new things. For example, it wants to lose weight. It wants a new relationship. It wants more money. It wants to become a speaker, start a business, etc., etc. And these two parts of you, the conscious and unconscious, are having a civil war inside of your brain. And this is the civil war. Your unconscious wants everything to stay the same because its number one goal is survival. It wants everything the same. This one's goal is to thrive. One side wants to survive, one wants to thrive. This side here wants quantity of life. This one here wants quality of life. That's it. This one just cares about staying alive. So why do you have a sabotage pattern? You have a sabotage pattern because you have the part of your brain that is running the show, wants to keep everything the same. And it assumes anything different to what's been the same as a threat. And I want you to get this. Everything in your past is proven to be survived. It's survivable. Because you're alive, because you're here, Everything in your past is survivable. Make sense? And so because it's survivable, it doesn't want to change it. So what you do, you go over here, I want to do all these new things. I want more money, a nice new car, a new relationship. I want all these things. But then what does the other part of you do? It doesn't speak in language. It hits you with self-doubt, negative beliefs. It says, don't do that. Stay the same. So it's a protection mechanism, and we should be very grateful for it. If we didn't have that part of us keeping us the same, knowing that we don't have to think about driving, knowing that we don't have to think about breathing, it just does it, we'd be in big trouble. So it's a very important part, but it also can stop us achieving abundance, okay? And what happens is, is we set up, and I've got my little rubber band here, we set up the wrong tension, okay? So let me show you something. In life, there's some few laws in the, in the world, in the universe, and one of them is that tension seeks resolution. Tension seeks resolution. So here's what most of us do. We say, I'm here in life. And I want to be over here. Great tension. Now, let me ask you a question. Do we change the vision or do we change who we are? Which one are we more likely to change? Which one's more movable? We set the tension. I want to make millions, but I don't have it. Is the vision more changeable or the identity? 
Of course, it's the vision. So here's what we do is we shrink this in a bit and then a bit and then a bit. Now, sometimes we keep the tension and, and then we actually move a little bit towards it. But guess what? There's another tension. If here's where we are now, there's a tension called our past. So there's the tension pulling us towards what we desire, but then there's also a tension towards our past. So guess what happens? As soon as you move a little bit towards your future, your past is sitting right here saying, don't change, stay the same, don't change. So you take two steps towards what you want. Guess where this tension is? And your past isn't moving at all. So if, let me show you the structure. This is huge. You're here in the middle. You have one structure going over here to point B and another structure going over here to point B. And what you do is you move a little bit this way, a little bit this way. And you never get anywhere in life. It gets a little bit better for a while, a little bit worse for a while, but you never break these certain barriers that you have. And this becomes your, your ceiling and your floor. This becomes your minimum. This becomes your maximum. Now, most of us don't have a minimum or a floor of living on the street. So if we get too close to getting broke, we do something. But we also, we have a ceiling. So if we get too far away from the floor, guess what? We come back and we don't get anywhere. Let me ask you guys a question. Are you enjoying today so far? Type in a yes if this is making sense and you can see some of your patterns and understand where you're at. Give me a yes if, you, if it's landing for you because this is a really, really big deal. A really big deal. And once you understand the structure, which we're going to go through now, then we can actually start to unravel and unpack it. Because here's the truth. If you have this structure set up, let's say that your, your minimum is having 20K in the bank. Your maximum is 100K. It doesn't matter what strategy, what people, what mentors, it doesn't matter what you're given, you will never get out of that. You will never get out of it. If you don't change your ceiling and your floor, well, your ceiling mainly, you'll never get out of it. And that's the problem. So how do we do that? Well, we have to change the one thing that is the most unmovable, which is your past history. This is where all the change happens. We can get over here and we're going to talk about this tomorrow. But today we're talking about this, changing what's been stopping you. Because check this out, tension seeks release. If you have a negative tension holding you back to your past, and you resolve this one, and then the same version here is getting pulled to the, this part, what's gonna happen, scientists, tell me. Fill me in, what's gonna happen if we have a negative tension holding us to our past and a positive tension towards what we want, and we resolve this one so there's not as much force pulling it backwards? What's gonna happen, guys? What's gonna happen to that person? They're going to move forward. They're going to move forward. And here's what most people do is most people do one of two things. They try to just focus on their goals without changing themselves, which is never going to happen. Or two, they think it's going to be more hard work, hard work, hard work, hard work. Or three, they give up on their dreams and just pull the tension back because it's too painful. Or four, they do some sort of BS self-work, but they're not working on the real stuff the stuff that's holding them back. So my goal today is help you to see that what's holding you back. So let me ask, who's willing and ready to go deep? Who's willing and ready to actually see what's been stopping them? Type in a yes if you are, because I'm excited to help you see this. This process is the real deal. I'm not holding back. I told you I was going to cover stuff that people pay me $60,000 a year to go through. I'm going to go through that today. But before I go into it, tomorrow's a huge session. Tomorrow, we're going to talk about what to put in, how to really get that second point. And it's, it's big. Most people get it wrong. Then we're going to go through a transformation process on day four and day five of creating a plan. We've got lots in store this week, guys, lots in store. And I'm giving away some coaching with me as well, which is going to be good. So here's my question. What is it that you desire? What is your point B? Type it in. What 
do you desire? What do you want to create? Type it in. Let me know. What do you want to create? What is it? A million dollars, a great lifestyle, an awesome business, 50,000 by December, 500,000. What is it that you want? Type it in. Let me know. You want to create 100% self-belief for what? What's the end goal? What are you trying to create when it comes to your money? Let's really get clear on this. What are you trying to create? Awesome. Love it. Love it. Type it in. Let me know. What are you trying? It's important that you do this. Extra finances. Nice. Okay, great. Here's the next question. Compared to that... Where are you now? So what do you desire was the first question. And then where are you now was number two. So where are you now? Compared to where you want to be, where are you now? Where are you now? Awesome. Awesome. Just be honest. No one really cares. Everyone's looking at themselves. So just be honest, type it in, write it down, whatever you want to do. I want to know where you are now compared to that. Just starting um, halfway, 10%, doing good, whatever it is. No money, a little bit, da, da, da. Great. A little bit stuck, no worries. Cool. All good. All good. One of the key things about creating tension is you must tell the truth about where you are now. Here, a lot of people, oh, you know, Chris, uh, I feel comfortable with my money situation, da, 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 da. How much you make? 50 grand a year. What? That was your dream as a kid to, you know, live off that? What? Come on, you want more than that? And so tell the truth, you know, this is where I want to be, this is where I am now. Nice. So here's the next question. What is the obvious next step to take. What is your obvious next step to take towards that? What action? What is the action that you must take? Because the truth is, in life, there's an action you must take. So I want you all to type in, what is the action you must take? This is very important. It's going to be a really big process. What is the next action? What is the next action you must take? If you don't have a business, start a business. Remember, I gave you some of the actions a couple of days ago. I laid out the plan. First, you've got to come up with an idea. Then you've got to start selling it. Then you've got to promote it. Then you've got to build systems. Then you've got to do it. So maybe take some inspiration from that. Type in, what is the obvious next step for you? Start a marketing campaign. Get my product out there. Start a business. Find a business. Whatever it is, write in, what is the obvious next step? Put myself out there as a speaker. Love it. Cool. Good, good, good. Look at these all coming through. Great. Great, great. So here's where it starts to get real. So the first question I have, what are your reservations? What are your reservations about taking that first step? How do you hold yourself back from taking that step? Type them in. Why, what do you tell yourself so that you're not taking that step? Why, why are you not taking it? How are you reserved from taking it? What excuses? Type them in. What are your excuses for taking that step? What are your reservations? I want to know. This is really important. It's not for me. It's for you to type it out. What are your reservations? I'm scared. I'm doubtful. I don't know what to do. Uh, I just put it off. I find distraction. What, what are your reservations? Well, I don't know if it will work. I'm overwhelmed. I don't feel like I deserve it. I keep putting it off. 
Fantastic. Truth will set you free. Scared it could go too big. Don't just say all of the above, some of you. Don't just outsource your own stuff. Have a look at why you're not doing it and write it in. Because if you don't look at why you're not doing it, no one else will. <laughs> I am watching. <laughs> so what are your reservations? Here's the next question. What are your judgments? What are your judgments around this next step? How do you judge yourself around taking that next step? And how do you judge others? What are your judgments? I don't think I can do it. I think others will mock me. I don't think that others will buy this. What are your judgments? Good. If you've already written it, fantastic. Well done. I'm not good enough. I'm judging it myself. Fantastic. Fantastic. Good for you. Good for you. Putting them all out there. Just get them out. Get them out. These are some of your negative tensions, some of the negative things that are holding you back. The next question that I have is what are your inner conflicts? What are your inner conflicts when it comes to this next step? Part of me thinks it will work, part of me won't. Part of me thinks it's a crap idea, part of me don't. Part of me believes that I can sell, part of me doesn't. What are your inner conflicts when it comes to taking this next step? Someone else deserves it more. What, how are you conflicted? A conflict is when part of you thinks this and another part thinks that. What are your inner conflicts? Part of me doesn't think I have enough energy. Got it. What are your conflicts? Part of me thinks money's a good thing. Part of me thinks that people that buy it, that have money are bad. What are your conflicts? Part of me wants to create a big business, but part of me just wants to sit on the beach and do nothing. What are your conflicts? Love it. Part of me believes in myself. Part of me self-doubts. I think I don't know enough, but I kind of might. I don't know. I'm conflicted. Do I know enough to do it? The good one. Should I just start a charity or should it be a business? Nice. Another good one. I feel selfish if I'm to receive money. Fantastic. I want to go big, but I don't want to go bigger than my family. That's a big one. That's a big one. My friends will judge me. I like it. You're actually judging your friends that they will judge you. You guys are doing great, by the way. Thank you for playing full out. I told you today was going to be a big session. So here's the next question. How do you in life resolve this tension? How do you resolve not having to do this? How do you resolve it? How do you resolve it? Now, what I mean by that is instead of taking this action, what is it that you actually do? How do you resolve it? Some of you just keep going to course after course after course. Some of you keep thinking that you're broken and keep going to healer after healer after healer. Some of you just give up. You go into it, but you never take the action. You give up. You, you, you go back into your shell. What action do you do in your life so you don't have to take the obvious next step? What do you do? You study, withdraw. What do you do to stay safe? What is the unconscious action that the safe part of you is doing to sabotage your success? This is freaking crucial. This is crucial. Love it. I go out drinking with my friends instead of doing it. Love it. I love it. You keep changing business ideas. Great one. How do you resolve the tension? How do you, what do you do instead of that? This is your sabotage pattern. This is your set. You give yourself an excuse like once bit and twice shy. Great. I don't get clear on what I want, just what I don't want. Nice. How, what do you do to sabotage what you should do? 
So here's what's interesting. Okay, I want to draw this out. Here we are at point A, and we want to get to point B. We, here we have a certain amount of money, and over here we have a lot more money. Now, there's an obvious step to take, and we know we need to take this step. Now, this is the step you're supposed to take, but what do we all do? We all take this other step over here that we know won't work. We know it doesn't work, but we lie to ourselves and we say that we do that it will work. We say, I've got to study more. I, I shouldn't do it now. I'm going to save more. I've got this. I've got it, whatever. But we do other action. This action is the one action that's holding you back from what you want. Did the penny drop? You have a self-sabotaging pattern because it's there to keep you safe. This is keeping you safe. This is what you want. And so the, the part of you that's the strongest always gets you to avoid doing what it is that you know you should do. So what do you do? You get distracted. You look after someone else. You study more. You go to another course. You just give up. You go in, you give up. You start multi-level marketing business and a Bitcoin business and another business and another one. Everyone has their own pattern. Let me know with, this, with a yes if you've been able to see something that's been stopping you. Give me a yes if you can see your pattern. Guys, this is the most important thing. It's the most important thing that you've got to understand if you want to create success. Every other course won't work until you deal with this structure. Until you start taking the action that you need to take, you won't get there. And so here's what we have to do. Tomorrow, we're going to be showing you how to get into the feeling of this now and bring the future to now. But today, we've got one more thing that I want to do. You guys enjoying this today? Is this good? Is this giving you clarity? Are you understanding it? Because my goal today was to deliver content that I don't normally share out there on the internet. Those of you who've been following me, you've probably never heard me share this outside of private circles. You've got to understand tension. We're too busy with focusing on this tension, the tension of our conscious mind. But there is an unconscious tension sitting behind the scenes, keeping us safe. Keeping us safe. Absolutely safe. So tomorrow we're going to deal with this one. Today we're going to deal with this. So I want to take you through this. There are seven sabotage patterns that you must look at and understand in order to, to reduce this tension so that you can move forward. So I hope you're ready. The first one is I'm unworthy. I'm unworthy. So because you're not worthy, instead of taking the action step, you take everything else in alignment with the person who is. So this person has a negative tension holding them back here because they don't believe that they belong. I don't belong. And because I don't belong, is they don't belong. So they're so frightened of what anyone else will say. That would a person is completely frightened, completely frightened of failure and being proven to be not good enough. And then the I'm unworthy person always, always only does things that they're worthy of. The next one. I can't trust myself. I can't trust myself or I can't trust others. This person will be a lone wolf and try to do it themselves. Every time they do trust someone, because of their negative tension, that person lets them down. And it affirms their identity that they're not able to find trustworthy people. And a sabotage pattern is, well, screw everyone else. I guess I've just got to do it myself. But then in the back of their mind, they don't even really trust themselves to do it. So they always have a victim mentality. The next one is I'm insignificant or I'm invisible. This person will never do anything that makes them be visible. They, they much 
prefer to be, be behind the scenes. The next one is I'm powerless. This person doesn't feel powerful enough to go and create and to do. So they'll just sit back and let life just take them. And then the, the last one is I have to be perfect. I have to be perfect. So I have to be perfect. Does someone want to type these out for me? That'd be great. I have to be perfect. I'm powerless. Insignificant. I can't trust myself. I don't belong. I'm not good enough and I'm unworthy. Now, to put this in perspective, all of us are all of these. All of us are all of these. Make sense? So all of us are all of these, and that's okay. Here's the point. We have seven core sabotaging patterns, okay, that we, we need to heal and look at. Now, you might sit there and go, well, Chris, you know, I'm not many of them. Or you might say, well, Chris, I'm all of them. Here's the truth is if you don't look at shifting some of these, they will stay there rock solid. And anytime you move towards what you want, I'm unworthy, will come in here to say, you're not worthy of that and pull you back. Or I'm not good enough. You're not good enough to do this. It will pull you back. Or you don't, you don't, like, what, that person's judging you. Look, you don't belong. That will pull you back. Or look, that person's about to let you down. You can't trust them. Pull you back. And this is a big thing to understand. I want to get some feedback from you guys who's here. Was it good and is it good for you to be able to see why you're creating the opposite action? Is it good? Is it good for you to see why you're taking this step? Because the true why, the why you're doing this step has nothing to do with this or this. It has everything to do with the sabotage pattern, you see? So you have this, this pattern over here that says, I'm unworthy. So instead of taking the step, you go, well, since I'm unworthy, I better go do this instead. Or, well, I'm not good enough, so I better go learn something. Or, well, I don't belong, I don't want to be judged, so you know, I'll, work, I'll do other things. So let me ask you, can you see the cause of the action? Who's with me? Can you see the cause of the action? This is the biggest gift I was ever given. I did so much work on myself. Twice trained in NLP, degrees all over the place, certification, Matt Trainer. Matrix Energetics, Quantum Linguistics, Reiki, EFT. I did everything. However, the problem was, it was under a presupposition is that I'm not good enough. There's something wrong with me. I need to heal me. There's something wrong. I got to heal me. And so I went around and looked at everything. And I realized the action I was taking was to search out healing. But the problem was that was based on a presupposition that I was not enough. And so what I was doing is the action of seeking out healing was actually living into the freaking identity that was supporting that action. So because I felt unworthy, I was trying to find a healing which just reinforced the fact that I wasn't worthy, that I wasn't enough. And so I went like this, around in circles. I made a little bit, I lost it. I made a bit, I lost it. And tomorrow I'm going through, on day four, I'm going to take you through a process to change it. Because here's what you've got to finish on. If right now, not enough, or don't belong, and then where you want to be is feeling good enough, fulfilled, with a great relationship. You've got to take care of this because this person is not this person. The person that has your desire is not the person that's looking at you in the mirror right now. 
And when I say that, your unconscious brain gets scared. It says, what? You're going to change what? No. This is what got us to hear. So it starts to feel uncomfortable. It might even say, no, that's BS. I am that person already. Well, prove it to me. Where's your bank account? Because a person who was that would have it. And that's a truth. That's not being negative. It's not being critical. That's a truth. And so I had to look at myself in depth. I had to ask myself, why did I go to a million and back, a million and back? Why did I keep doing this? Why? And it had nothing to do with everything I thought it was. It had everything to do with looking back at my unconscious patterns, understanding all of those, and then being okay with them. Let me ask a question. How many on here would love to heal these unconscious patterns? Who would love to, 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 all of you that are writing in just got tricked. This is the biggest thing I learned from billionaires. By going in trying to heal, you're living in the identity that you're broken. And that identity is strong. It will just keep finding ways that you're not enough. And I see people go down the rabbit hole of personal development and self-healing for years, not realizing that their actual identity is somebody that thinks that they're broken trying to change. And it screws a lot of people up. And a lot of people make a lot of money from it. Because once you start looking for ways you're not good enough or the ways that you're unworthy, your unworthiness is what's driving it. You can't possibly do both. You can't possibly be searching for ways <laughs> to fight, to, to heal ways you feel unworthy while feeling freaking worthy. And that's the big, the big shift. That's the big shift. And so I'll take you through the process on Thursday that allows you to manifest and step into what you want. Thank you for being here. This means a heck of a lot to me to teach and to train this. A heck of a lot. I got chills running up and down my body right now as I share this with you. It means a heck of a lot because I see a lot of people being shown the wrong way. And I promised to myself when I had a $5 million or more company, I would come back and I would teach the truth. And then I got a kick from a bunch of billionaires who said, Chris, go teach it because everyone's doing it wrong and they're suffering because of it. I've run out of time for tonight. Otherwise, I would go right into the next step. But the next step is tomorrow. The next step is tomorrow. And it's going to be massive. It's going to be massive. Tomorrow, I'm going to show you how to move to who you're being without the need to heal or look at stuff. I'm going to show you how to shift. I'm going to show you how to quantum leap onto a different timeline, into a different way of being. I'm going to explain quantum physics in a way that you'll understand. I hope you realize that there is no past so there is nothing that we actually need to work on. We just need to shift into a new way of being now so that this gets replaced onto here. We shift the now. All change happens in the now. We shift the now. We don't need to go looking for anything. There's nothing wrong. You're not broken. We shift the now. And here's the thing is when the now is rich, when the now is abundant, when the now is good enough, it will get bigger and bigger and bigger until you have all the dollars and everything that you want. But it starts in the now because there's no good freaking reason why in 2019 you can't feel abundance. Everything you want is a feeling. You want to make the money because you want to feel abundant. You want to be successful. You want to have the marriage, the relationship because you want to feel love. Everything is a feeling. There is nothing you can't access now, guys, tomorrow is going to be powerful. It is going to be fire. I would just, I would love more than nothing to keep going right into it, but I won't because I'm going to go spend time with my wife, but I will jump over to the group for a quick Q&A because I've had no chance, 
no chance to get to most of these chats in here. There's been over 475. There's 475, 76, 77 messages, 78, 79 in here. So let's jump over to the Facebook group. If you've got questions, let's go there. If you're watching the replay, ask me in the group. I hope that this was a good session. I hope that it was exciting. I'll be over there to answer your questions in just two minutes. So see you over there. Here is what I would love you to do. I'd love you to give me some feedback. Post in the group your number one takeaway. Let me know what you noticed. Let me know what was good. And let's make sure that you're all here for tomorrow because guess what? I'm not stopping. We're just getting warmed up. We're just getting started. And tomorrow is going to be fire. It is going to be so important that you are there, that you're excited, and that you're feeling powerful. So I will see you tomorrow. I'm jumping over in the group right now. So if you want, see you over there and just... Uh, a little bit. Love you guys. Live with freedom. Free your mind, free your time, free your life, and do what matters most. See you in the group. Bye, guys.